name is Lillian Broca and I am a visual artist here in Vancouver and we are now at Il Museo at the Vancouver Italian Cultural Centre and this is my exhibition called Mary Magdalene Resurrected. I started doing research on Mary Magdalene in 2016. Previous to this biblical figure from the New Testament, I completed three others, Lilith, Esther, and Judith. The last two also using the mosaic medium. Why mosaic? I love the luminosity of glass. I love its reflection and the long lasting quality. I use Venetian smalto glass, which is opaque. Through the manipulation of that light in my narrative series, I am able to create works that possess both intellectual content and a dynamic living quality. I noticed that for the last two millennia, mosaics have been the favorite medium for celebrating masculine achievements in politics and especially in the military. Usually, these mosaics were created in monumental sizes and we still see examples today, like Alexander the Great's military campaign mosaics, which was found in Pompeii. Conversely, when it came to women, this was not the case. The female iconography was that of deities and mythological female figures. So it is for this reason that I chose the mosaic medium and the monumental sizes to represent my heroines, my protagonists. By inserting female heroism into an ancient monumental art form, I am hoping that my mosaics relating stories of ancient women will finally be accorded the same dignity and respect as their male counterparts. Why Mary Magdalene? Well, for the last 30 years, I've been exploring the stories of courageous female biblical figures who, despite overwhelming odds, they prevailed through sheer courage and wise resolve. I have consciously used these figures as metaphors and role models, finding them relevant to contemporary society and employing them to shed light on today's concerns. One of the female figures who intrigued me was Mary Magdalene, whose story has been greatly redacted over the centuries, leaving us various versions which offered divergent perspectives of her importance and placement in the life of Jesus. I never expected to find such a variety of accounts. My research was lengthy and interesting. Unlike my former heroines, yet equally courageous, loyal, and determined, Mary Magdalene survived not only fierce enemies wishing her harm, but once Jesus died on the cross, the ensuing 2,000 years of denigration, defamation, and vilification. What I want to achieve Throughout history, the way ancient women's stories have been recorded and imparted have greatly affected the way women have been perceived and valued in cultural and social climates of later generations. My intent was and still is to restore through my art the high social status and feminine power Mary Magdalene possessed during her life with Jesus by her side. I hope that this series offers new ways to perceive the hugely influential relationship between Jesus and Mary Magdalene. Also, to reassess what happened to that relationship because it was written by the male founders of Christianity. 
As well, I'm hoping my mosaics and drawings will offer strong reasons to motivate the viewers to re-examine this critical episode in human history. Why illuminated manuscript composition? Well, I have always loved the medieval illuminated manuscripts produced by monks who spent a lifetime completing just one such masterpiece. These handwritten and illustrated scripture manuscripts were produced in different places and in different languages. So I felt in this case, with Mary Magdalene as a protagonist, the unifying motif in all the mosaics would be best suited by using each mosaic as a manuscript page, with the illumination being a scene I wanted to portray. I use, therefore, seven ancient languages spoken during Mary Magdalene's life, one for each of the seven mosaics in this exhibition. The languages are Aramaic, Armenian, Hebrew, Ancient Greek, Amharic or Ethiopian, Latin, and Coptic, which is the language spoken in Egypt in those days. Each mosaic panel measures six and a half by four feet. The scripts are authentic, but the texts themselves are not relating to the illumination. And this is because ancient texts are very difficult to find, let alone with passages that correspond to my images. So I'm using them as decoration, symbolizing the various story Mary Magdalene versions I found in my research. Additionally, as in medieval illuminated manuscripts, I have used religious symbolism from both Jewish and Christian faiths in all of these mosaics. I hope all of you will have a chance to come and visit the exhibition here at Il Museo, which will continue until August the 15th. If you wish more information, please visit our websites.